church. How are we doing today? How are we doing today? All right. Wow. Praise God. This is the day the Lord has made. I rejoice and I am glad in it. I don't know about you, but I rejoice. Praise God. This is the day the Lord has made. I rejoice and I am glad in it. It's so I'm glad this morning. You know, last week, when Pastor Mike, you know, finished, you know, preaching us up on joy and everything, as soon as he came down, it was like a weight dropped on me. But it's not weight of glory. It's weight of, ha, ah, you me look up. And I'm like, oh my God. Somewhere between then and now, I've been expecting the rapture will happen, but I'm here. So, it means that God has something for us. Hallelujah. Praise God. I want to say thank you to Pastor Timmy for this opportunity to share God's word with his people. I know I've been dodging. I've been dodging. In fact, the first day I saw the very official message, I'm like, huh? What's going on here? My heart was racing. It was beating fast. I'm like, no, I'm not ready. No, I'm not ready. Can this call pass? He was like, I should respond officially too. I told him that I will not be around by that. He said, don't worry. The spirit will make the arrangement perfect. And that was the end of the conversation. And here we are today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <sighs> Praise God. Perhaps you are here. You are saying, hmm, we hear what she has to say today. Let's even know if she has it. She she's a pastor's wife. She just likes to slave. She doesn't sit in front. I know what is going on in your heart. And you're wondering, we know if she has it today. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I don't have anything to prove to you. I don't. You know, in 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 12, he says, they comparing themselves amongst themselves is not wise. I don't have anything to prove to you. Yes, I've been taught by him in the many years we've been together. I've gleaned from him. But what makes us unique is that we don't sound alike. Yes, if you've been under somebody for so long, you will have certain nuances of them, maybe gestures, smiles, all of those things. We might even have certain vocabularies that are common to us, but that doesn't make us essentially the same. The Bible in Corinthians says that there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And it is the spirit that works individually in everyone as he wills. The spirit works in everyone as he wills. So I'm not here to prove anything to you. It's just the while of the devil trying to distract you and rob you from getting blessed. So don't give in to that. Amen. Amen. Don't give in to that. Don't give in to that. God makes everything good. He says if the old body is an eye, how would he look? We are one body but different parts. He has trained us. He has so much confidence that I can bring God's word to you. So trust God to do the same to you. Praise God. The true essence of leadership is not that one person does it all. Is that he can delegate. I mean, God got all of the authority and delegated it to the church. Why didn't he reserve it from himself? But he said we needed it here. So if he says I can do it, believe that God says I can do it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So say with me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I declare that I am focused and attentive. I rebuke all distractions. I rebuke all distractions and anything that seeks to take my attention away from the word. My eyes are open to his seeing. My eyes are open to see, my ears are open to hear, my mind is alert to receive of his word. Amen and amen. Praise God. That's introduction one. All right. This year, our emphasis in church has been much more. Our anchor text, Ephesians um, 3 verse 20 says to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. 
I know that we're already in the Ember month. As is the custom of some people, you are starting to wind down. But God says, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Because even if the year is over, his word is still valid. It's still very much valid. We've been taught times and times again that he's not the God of calendars. He's the God of Kairos. He's the God of seasons. And until he tells you that that season is over, he's not done with you. So, there's still much more in place. There's much more. Tell your neighbor there's much more. Hallelujah. And then in the teachings in the past month, we are made to understand that much more has to do with both tangibles and intangibles. So, much more as of things, right? Things that we can see. Money, cars, houses, children, anything you call a thing. We are able to establish that God will have us have much more of things. Because in Mark 11 verse 24, it says, Whatsoever you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall what? You shall have them. Praise God. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. I do not what? Want. In our prayers this morning, as Sister Tony was leading us, he says that in Psalms, he satisfies our mouth with what? We good things. Praise God. And Philippians says, the Lord what? Supply all our needs. So have we been able to establish that God will have us have things? Yes. He doesn't just want things to get a hold of us. Things are a tool. They are a tool. It is not the means to an end. God, we have all have things. We've talked about how God believes that his people should prosper. So we are not against prosperity. God, we have you have things. But as tangible as these things are, there are other intangibles that are very necessary. The fact that we cannot see them with our eyes does not make them less existent or less real. So God, we have you have much more in praying and in studying of the word. God, we have you have much more in rejoicing. We've been on a joy way for the past three weeks. I hope we don't leave it in church and come back to pick it up next week. There's much more to do. God has told you, increase your commitment to your local church. There's much more to do in that aspect. God has told you, increase your giving. There's much more to do. So concerning spirituals, much more is not left out. And so today, we'll be looking at something that has to do with much more. But what? Much more in what? Who can guess? Who can guess? Hmm? In the word? You don't even know, even if you guess what. Okay, let's hear you. Yes. Eh? I don't have money. So... <laughs> All right, so today we'll be looking at much more in love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can tell that I'm a woman of love, right? My shoes are red, blinding your eyes. Woo! So we'll be talking about walking in love because God will have us abound much more in love. Please, can you give me Philippians 1 and verse 9? Philippians 1 and verse 9. Hallelujah. Are you following me? All right. And this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in all descent, in all knowledge and what? All discernment. I pray that your love may abound more and more in all knowledge and what? All discernment. Is this the time? It is well. Praise God. Oh, that one translation says that your love may what overflow. NLT. That your love what may overflow. GLT says that your love may keep growing. That your love may keep growing. That your love may flourish. That you will continue to grow and increase in love. Does that sound like much more to anybody? Hmm. That your love will continue to grow and increase beyond measure. So it's telling us that if you have a 50 kg skill, for instance, and you put a 250 kg worth of goods on the scale, it's going to get to the end and then it stops there. That's it. 
that our love we outweigh. So you put it on a scale, and it's like, I'm way past this. Duh. That our love will grow, and it will increase. Then there's a translation I really like so much. Can you give me Amplified Classic? And then message afterwards. Amplified Classic. That your love may grow. Here he says that your love may flourish. Which one do we have first? Um, Amplified Classic. He says that, that your love may abound and extend to its fullest development. Who? Is that not maturity? That your love may grow and abound to its fullest extent and maturity. Mothers, sisters like me, if you want to go to the market to buy livestock, fruits, and everything, do you take the smallest one? Be sincere with yourself. Even the ones that you cannot see the contents inside, with coconut, you will shake the water like this, like, mm, this one, it was not an orphan coconut. Let's take it home. If you go to buy goats, you don't buy the thin or the slimmest one. You look for ones that is matured. Because why? Well, you know that with maturity comes a sweeter taste. Yeah. Something happens to it. You are like, mm. the taste is different. So God will have us grow to our fullest extent. He will have us mature. He will have us mature. He will have us have ground. Praise God. And message says something. That your love may flourish. Not only would you love much, but you would love very well. <laughs> Not only would you love much, but you will love well. So he's saying if you have the capacity to love five people before. No, it can increase. There can be ten more people. I used to be in that show. If I love you, is it an everlasting love? As in, the love can, it can be... It can, it can choke you because it's enough to have among 10 people. But God was like, you can't do life like this. Only have one person. What if what happened to the person? And Japa happened to many of my friends anyway. So I had to expand my tentacles, strengthen my cord, lengthen my stake. Because we have the capacity to do. So it's telling us about quality and quantity of loving. That not only would you love much, you would love very well. You'll be intentional about your loving. Hallelujah. Does that sound like much more to you this morning? <laughs> that you will love. That you will be excellent in love. You will be superfluous in love. You will have love so much that it will almost come to a waste. Maniki Lampi love. Shishabi is love. Small thing. <laughs> and that means that you will not only love the people that are deserving. You will love undeserving people as well. Praise God. Being over and beyond, being over and above. Ephesians, our anchor scripture, Ephesians 3 verse 20 says, unto him that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly. So it's talking of excess. We are not just saying just enough. We are saying more than enough. And he has, God has it to go around. So if you ask God, increase my capacity. And Joshua is saying the same thing. He does not reduce to, uh, Mofet's capacity to love. Right? is the multi-breasted one. So, you enlarging in your place of love does not mean that you are robbing another believer. God has enough to satisfy everybody. He says, though we are many, he is meeting our needs one-on-one. -on -one. Is the multi-breasted one. And he has all that it takes if you will just let him. Praise God. And then you are and you're asking, why are they emphasizing love? It's not February. And Valentine is coming, they will still tell us about love. Because it's good to emphasize and reestablish this truth. We've been talking about joy. The month before, we talked about prayers. We spent almost three months in speed code. Is it the first time you're hearing prayers? No. But it's so that we'll be well-grounded. We'll be matured. So that we will not jettison one thing and excel in another. So that our development will be awesome. So we'll not be joyful people, but joyful people without love. So that we will not be loving people, but loving people without patience. No, but that we will stand complete and perfect in all of God's will. That unto joy we are adding love. Unto love we are adding prayers. Unto prayers we are adding patience and long-suffering and meekness and temperance. That will be fully established. Praise God. So why then do we emphasize love? I'll give you three reasons. I'll give you three. We will start with that. The first is that Jesus made it our highest calling. Give me Matthew 22, 37 to 39. Jesus made it our highest calling. 
Matthew 22, 37 to 39. Are we there? Jesus said to him, you shall love your God with all your heart and with your soul and with all your mind. Next verse. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. It says you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Then the next verse says, this is the first and greatest commandment. The version says greatest. When we put emphasis on first and greatness, it's telling you that one thing outweighs the other, right? In Revelation, it says, I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. So it tells you that when they say first, you know, okay, so I'm not from a polygamous family, but I know that in polygamous family, no matter how they might feel like, let's marry 15 concubines, the first wife always have a place. You'll be like, oh, bam, do you understand? So God is saying, pay attention to loving God with your soul and with your heart. And then what do we do with commandments? This is not a suggestion, I'll show you know. As a soldier of Christ, when you receive a command, you say, sir, yes, sir, and then you go ahead about it. You receive your matching orders. You are not saying, can I? Should I? Maybe no. Maybe not now. You receive your matching orders and you go. So God is saying to us that we love him, but not only should we love him, but we should love our neighbors as well. Praise God. And with obedience, it should not be something that is forced. Our obedience to God's command should be out of delight, not duty, because his commandments are not grievous. If he tells you, efforts are do this, it's because he knows that you have it in you to do it. Praise God. Because the Spirit energizes us to do what is right and to live and to, you know, live out our life and obey his commandments. Praise God. He said, you shall love your God with your heart. And you shall love your neighbor. I'm sorry to say, or I want to tell you, loving people and loving God is not a subscription-based model. You do it in and out of season. You walk in love when you feel like it and you when you don't feel like it. So you cannot say, ah, the price has increased today. I've exhausted my bandwidth of love for this month. See you next month. Mm -mm. It's not subscription-based. You do it whether you feel like it or not. Praise God. So the first thing I said was, it is our highest calling. Jesus made it our highest calling. Are you following this morning? Are you following? Yeah. Two, it is a mark of his true disciple. It is a mark of his true disciple. It is a mark of his true disciple. Give me John 13, 34 to 35. John 13, 34 to 35. A new commandment, see the word commandment again, I give to you. That you love one another as I have loved you. And, okay, the blue light. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love another. By this, all we know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. By what? By this. What is this? By loving. So it is telling us that loving is a demonstration of our faith. Beyond any religious activity, you can pray past. Your tongue sounds like Russian tongues. You know, when people hear it, they are like, mm -mm. you know, it's signature. They're like, mm. it's stimulating that it's praying in that place. You might be able to give. First Corinthians 13 says that even though I give my body to be Bond, and I have not love, now waste. You can be best, overall best in coming early. You don't miss service, you don't do anything. You give, you do everything. Beyond any of those spiritual activities and all of those, and you know, and things. The way we know that you are God's disciple is if you love. Praise God. So, are we saying ignore spiritual practices? No, that's not what I'm saying. But we ought to love. Because that's how people know we are God's disciples. Our love work is a testimony to the fact that we belong to Jesus. Some of us are in the habit of making Jesus look bad. Please don't let, don't do it. Don't. 
Our love walk is a testimony to the fact that we belong to Jesus. Remember that he sets us apart. So if you really say, ah, Jesus, I love you. You are mine. Thank you for salvation. We will see it. We will see it. Our loving, our character should be consistent with the nature that we have received. Have you seen many Christians with contradictions? They say they love God, but we are like, oh, sure, sure. We are just so you go. <laughs> there shouldn't have been contradictions. Our love work, it should be consistent to the life of God that we have in us. Because this is how we know that we are his disciple, that we love one another. The measure of spiritual maturity is in character development. And that is why you can't say you're a Christian and you're continuing sin. We are not talking about sinless perfections here, but how about, you know, deepened consecration? We reflect God. And how they will say, mm, Hayobami is God's disciple, is that she loves as God has loved her. Praise God. So the first one I said what? It is what? Our highest calling. The second I said is what? It is a true mark of what is disciple. The third one, why do we emphasize working in love? It's because working in love has rich benefits as well as consequences for failing to work in love. You don't go wrong working in love. You don't go wrong working in love. Working in love has rich benefits as well as consequences if you fail to work in love. I'll give you one consequence of failing to work in love. It can affect your health. You are bitter, full of animosity. It, everything is shot doing you. Every today, you have done stress, eye test, stress test, EG, CG, everything. They don't know what is happening. But maybe it's just because you are just like, every time you see somebody, just like, maybe your legs should just, the ill of her should just remove that. <sighs> work in love. Praise God. Work in love. Because when you fail to work in love, it can affect your health. And the devil tries on human carelessness. If you give him a foothold, he will, you just open the door wide to the devil. Matthew 12, I think, he was saying that while men slept, the enemy came and sold tears. 1 Peter 5 verse 8 says, be sober and vigilant because your what? Your adversary, the devil, is roaming about looking for women. You don't have to do anything. You know how we say, I'm on standby when we are sending official mail. He's always on standby. You don't have to go and look for him. He's there. So once he just sees like a small opening, we're like, oh yeah. So working in, in not working in love will affect your health. You do not want to give a full thought to the devil. Because it thrives on human carelessness. And then you will not blame God that God, you see what is happening to me. But God is like, it's not me. I didn't do it. I didn't. Praise God. Another consequence of failing to walk in love is that it undermines your authority. You will find it difficult to resist the devil. That is because you're already in disobedience. And if you're in disobedience in one thing, you know the devil is the accuser now. Is that thing that you're not doing right that will be coming back to your conscience like you? Hmm. It undermines your authority. You say it is like, no, I didn't hear you. It undermines your authority. And we know that we are speaking spirits. When we say things, we give directions. So don't give the place to the devil. We say give no place to the devil. But you can if you are working in disobedience by not working in love. Hallelujah. The third thing is that it can inhibit you from hearing God, from being led by the Spirit. And this is why the same Spirit that leads you to do spiritual things is the same one that leads you to walk in love. So if God is saying, do this, do that, you haven't done it, and then you want him to lead you in other things, even when he's speaking expressly, you will not hear it. So we ought to walk in love because there are rich benefits. He says, with long life, I will satisfy you and I will show you your salvation. But it's contingent that your heart is right. Because even if your family has the Guinness World Record of living long, if you are walking in sin, you just set yourself up for multiple things. You might live long, but it might not be a good life. Praise God. 
Praise God. So we emphasize love because love is our highest calling. It is a true mark of his disciple and it has rich benefits. Praise God. Praise God. Are you following me? So, how do we walk in love? Is it the way I'm struggling with Demio and Zikotsi and all of those things that you see now? How do you walk in love? We say love is a verb, right? And a verb is what? It's an action word. It means that what? Your love is evident in the doing, right? It is evident in doing. So, it means that living a life that reflects God in our thoughts and in our actions. I say thoughts. I, say, I know I said love is a verb. It means you're doing something. But I also included that living a life that reflects God in our thoughts. Because um, when Jesus was speaking about adultery, and he was like, you have been told, thou shall not commit adultery, thou shall not do this. And he now tells you that whoever looks at a woman lustfully has already done it. So the fact that you have not done it out, but you have thought of it, your motive is not right, means that you are out of love in the first place. So we are reflecting God both in our actions and in our thoughts. Praise God. Praise God. Because God sees our thoughts even when men cannot. So when we say to walk in love, he's living a life that reflects God in everything that we do. Amen. We've been Establish that love is a commandment. God will have us love. And with commandment come certain obligations. If you're in the army, you will not keep beer beer. There are things that you will not do. Your hair will be either shiny or very low and all of that. It helps people with bald head a lot. So you won't know the status of their hair. So with loving God has his commandments, his duties. I'm sorry. I tend to use lots of examples and prayer. Just forgive me. Don't worry. If I commit any blunder. Pastor Timmy will come and address it next week. Don't worry. Just flow. Praise God. So, with loving are its obligations. So, this morning we'll be talking about some of our love obligations. They are not limited to these things we'll talk about, but we'll just look at a few. The first one I want to say, or we can also call it practical steps or practical ways to working in love. And the first one is being kind to one another. Can you give me 1 Corinthians 13, uh, verse 4 to 7? 1 Corinthians 13, 4 to 7. It says, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up, right? Love does not behave rudely does not seek his own, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there are there is knowledge, it will vanish away. So the first thing, or one practical way to work in love, is being kind. Being warm-hearted. Having a warm disposition to someone. Being generous. Hallelujah. Being generous. I know that we're a generous church. Even though the world people we see otherwise, church has been getting a lot of bad PR these days. That church is just about people's money. Bring your money, bring your money, bring your money. But that's not true. In, you know, in the clusters yesterday when we were talking about how that the apostles um, continued in the apostles' doctrine and in breaking of bread and going from house to house and everything. You know, outside there, they would make us believe that, you know, church is not involved in, you know, helping people. Church is not generous. But that's a lie. That's a lie. Because we don't stand on the high streets to talk about it does not mean it's not happening. So we are generous believers. We are kind. We are warm-hearted. We are kind in speech. Ephesians 4 and 29 says that, let your speech be gracious. 
Let no evil communication come out of your mouth, but that which is a divine, that it may bring grace to those who hear it. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Let our words build up, speaking kind words, encouragement. We encourage people. We encourage people when they are down. We do not trample upon them the more. Praise God. We give genuine compliments. If there's anything I've learned to do a bit more, is that I couldn't give compliments. I, it's even worse. I couldn't even receive it. I can't say thank you. Have you met some people? You ask them, what do you think about these things? And I'm like, mm, mm, mm. When you shall wind them, wind them, wind them. And I say, it's okay. Ah, it is well low. <laughs> Tell somebody you look good. We are not saying you should lie. We are not saying you should embellish anything. But you can give sincere compliments, hearted compliments. My sister Umi does it. She just tell him, mm, it's the looks for me. She does it so well. You affirm people because you feel good when people do these things to you. So do it to others. Being kind in our words, not jesting unnecessarily or in sarcasm because in many words, there's sin. Sin is not lacking. Withholding privilege. I'm still talking about being kind. Many of us cannot suffer ourselves to be defrauded. In the name of the Lord. You just see Pastor Timmy at the first station, dodging blow with anointing. <laughs> right? That's what some of us do. Because somebody is trying to chance us. We now then become badly behaved. Is your right? We know. <laughs> Calm down. I didn't say Pastor Timmy went to petrol station. <laughs> Please, oh. <laughs> But I'm just saying that it applies to everybody. It looks funnier because he's a pastor. But you should, you should feel the same way about it. You should. It's not because of his, he's a pastor. It's not because of status. If no church member sees you, God is seeing you. Remember that we are his disciples. And how they know is that we are showing love. So even when you are being robbed of your rights, Suffer yourself to be defrauded, not insisting that you are always right. I used to have a shirt that has, I may not always be right, but I'm never wrong. <laughs> Same, no, no. Suffer yourself to be defrauded. Praise God. Be accepting and accommodating. Some of us are very touchy. Very touchy. I'm not okay, and we make it look fashionable. I'm not okay, oh. Ah, I'm not okay at all. Is if not for God, he's shaking it. And we, ah, wow. I'm not throwing shades, oh. I'm a, I'm a very practical and relatable person. That's just the truth. I, I will let you. I want things that you can relate with. You are very touching. Ah, if not for God. Do you know who I am? I am that I am. <laughs> Be accepting and accommodating. In correcting people, we can be kind in correction. And you know, there's a way you can tell people that, ah, you know, movies and realities of Nigeria has taught us that if anybody say with all due respect or respect, really speaking, honestly, whatever comes after, we lack all the sense of respect. So you just, before you start, just say, don't worry, go ahead, speak your mind, speak your mind. There's a way to correct people. We are not condescending. We correct people as people that have received grace themselves. First Timothy 1 and 15, I think. Um, Paul writing to Timothy was saying that this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance that Christ came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. So he's telling you, it is in my place to tell you about this gospel because I have received of the mercy. So even when we are correcting people, 
Others can see the vulnerability in us too that is the grace of God has helped us this far. Have you seen the apostles we have in the body of Christ these days? Disrespect and everything, dishonor. No. We are a representative. We are an envoy. And we reflect the person that has sent us. If I'm going to the UN today, I'll be on best behavior because I'm representing my country, right? So Christ sent us out. We are his disciples. So let's not make God look bad. We have received of his grace. So when we are saying something is wrong, it's not because we are feeling high and mighty. It's because we are saying you can come up higher. God's grace has helped us. It can help you too. So in correcting, have you noticed that the loudest voices about a particular issue will soon be guilty or are currently guilty of something that they are correcting somebody about? Why is it that? It's because it comes with arrogance. Knowledge puffs up. In the text we read, Philippians 1 verse 9, it says that you will be abound in love, in all knowledge, and in all discernment. But it looks like we want to have love or have knowledge. But we have to grow in love and in knowledge. Why is it that the more or deeper revelation you have in God's word, the far behind and lack sensitivity to human feelings that you, a person you are? God has shown himself to you. Seen, you've seen God. But then, you, you, are, you then become unrelatable. Don't do that. Because we have received of his mercy. Praise God. We are not hypocrites. We are not. Praise the Lord. So we should grow in love and we should grow in knowledge at the same time. Amen. Wow. The second thing, practical ways to love, is by praying for one another. I will not spend so much time there because we spent an extended time talking about speed code. It says that we should pray for one another. You know, Pastor Timmy dedicated a Sunday to intercession and supplication. We pray for all saints. We pray for leaders, even when they hijack your vote. Amen. You don't have the right to condemn or judge somebody you haven't prayed for. You don't. It's not in your place. What you owe them is prayers. Even if you've heard stories about them, pray for them still. Pray for them. Amen. So we pray for one another. Praise God. We live at peace with one another. So the third thing is living at peace. One of the ways by which we extend or we show that we are maturing and walking in love is by living in peace with one another. Give me Romans 12 and verse 18. It says, as much as lie within you, live peaceable with all men. A translation says, make every effort to be at peace with all men, even when they are not deserving of it. 1 Timothy 2 when he was saying that we should pray for all leaders and all, he said that they might lead a peaceable and quiet life. Romans 13 and verse 10 says that love does not harm his neighbor. Are you an instigator or a peacemaker? Have you seen some people, if you really want to resolve the matter, don't call them inside. Because you just be like, ah, he talks to you like that. If it's me, I cannot take it though. Ah, he calls your generation, generation. And something that is already being resolved, you are back to ground zero. Praise God. We are peacemakers. When we have troublesome neighbors, troublesome colleagues, we are peacemakers. We do not respond to everything. Pastor Mike showed us a practical ways to deal with people that trouble us. Rejoice. God is executing judgment much better than you can do. Not resulting to feast. Somebody put their generator behind your window and then his exhaust is coming. You move it, they move it back. You move it, they move it back. And one day you just, you just punch. Just please don't punch. Praise God. <laughs> Living at peace. Being weary of offenses. Mm -hmm. Being weary. 
when they say be weary, it means that ah, Yoruba will say, Koyai Lara, don't be quick to take offense. If they give you, don't collect. You say, don't give somebody. And even when you give or you receive offense, easily forgive. Easily forgive. We know that we are human. So even if your legs are folded under your clothes and it's, some people will still look for it there. If they can't cross your leg, they will tickle your hair. They will do something that will make you upset. But after all is said and done, forgive. We have people that have sentenced people to 10 years imprisonment, 15 years imprisonment, life imprisonment without parole in church. Even God cannot say you should forgive the person. Why? What you are just trying to tell us is that if you do the same thing to God, God will not forgive you. As long as God is able to forgive you of everything, you ought to forgive others too. Why are you holding grudge? Why? They ought to, yes, forgive them. And you can create a respectable boundary without working in unforgiveness and hatred. So you ought to forgive. Be weary of offenses. Amen. Being there for one another. Being there for one another. Galatians 6 and verse 2 says, Bear each other's burden. Bear each other's burden. Lending a hand when it is necessary. We emphasize church community a lot here. Bearing each other's burden. Not because it is the most convenient thing to do, but because the love of God compels us. I remember, um, sometimes last day I was still an early mom and, you know, new to all of these things. And Pastor Timmy traveled that weekend. And for some funny reasons, Riri just decided that, ah, there's no sleep for the weekend today. Oh. And we were coming to church the next day. So I couldn't wear makeup. I couldn't do anything. My eyes were just, ah. And that was the same day PowerPoint was going to launch their new venue, the garrison. So I came to church, was just there, as in I was just yawning, and, and the sister came and was like, ah, are you fine? I said, I'm okay. It's just sleep that is wrong with me. There's nothing. And then she said, I come to my house now. I'm like, no, I don't want to inconvenience you. And she said, no, not at all. Ah, somewhere in my mind, I'm like, ah, will you be a responsible mother like this? You want to go to somebody? Like she was like, no, we we'll take care of her. She she has her food. We we'll take care of her. Not only did I sleep, they offered their bed with AC. And I'm sure that even if it was Bande currently, they would have still done the same. You think they didn't need, have a need for their bed? That was the best two hours sleep. You know when it was so precious? And then I woke up to spaghetti. And, ah, oh God. <laughs> it, really refreshing. If I, they didn't even wake me wake me. They went ahead of the program like, no, when she wakes up, I'm like, wow. Not because it is convenient. You think it's easy to host people? No, but we are there for each other. I remember when we moved into our new community, the first two days of feeding, it was on the dying knees. Not because we asked, but because they are loving people. It's in the simplest of things. Being there, lending your time, lending your years. Yes, you might not have the money to solve everybody's problem, but you can ask genuinely, how are you? And don't be in a hurry to say, you're yeah, fine. You know, you ask the question, you answer it. <laughs> Being there for each other. The love of God compels us. With regards to go church, we've been saying go for evangelism, go for evangelism, go for evangelism. It's the love of God that compares. It's not because it's easy. Some of you have been re rehearsing the same line. They've done practical, we've done theory. Oh yeah, go, you are still not gone. But then, knowing the terror of God, you have to go out because God is not willing that anyone should perish. The love of God compels us. Amen. Rendering services to one another. So I've talked about five, um, I'm on the fifth one now. The first one I said that we, what, we should be kind to one another. I said that what we should pray for one another. I said we should live in peace with one another. And I said we should be of help. Help one another. Render a hand. Then 
This fifth one, and then I think we'll just close because I can see my time. Rendering services to one another. Free or paid, do it with excellence. Free or paid, do it with excellence. When you render services to somebody, remember that we are envoys, we are God's disciples. You volunteered for something in your local assembly, but at every instance you get, you keep reminding us that we cannot afford you. Yes, we know. But do it with joy nonetheless. Whether it's a gift or the person paid for it, place premium on whatever it is that you are producing out. One of our core values is excellence. So in rendering of service, do it with excellence. You might, yours might not be service. Yours might be buying and selling. Do it so well. And in the rendering of service, in the buying of this thing, do not owe anybody. Pay your debts. Romans, please give me that verse that says, um, Oh, no man except love. Oh, no man, nothing. Romans 13, verse 8. Romans 13 and verse 8. It says, Oh, no one, nothing except to love one another. So if you have been offered a service, please pay for it. Somebody sells something to you first week, second week, third week. You have not paid. And then when they send you a reminder, you are bothered about the time the reminder came. Do you want to bankrupt their business? Pay for it. If you can't afford to do it, say, I'm sorry, it's not, um, it's not possible. Let them know that it's on the top of your mind. But it's just like they will not tell you, ah, well, I'm sorry to remind. They're even pleading on top of their money. And you're not saying, why would she be asking me? She be federal government self is owing money. Ah, ah, ah. If everybody does that, will that business be existing? No, don't do that. Pay up what you owe. As a rule, unless it has been told to you that the debt is forgiven, please pay it, even if it's after five years. In fact, you should pay over and beyond because the value of that money or whatever things you exchange or value is not the same. Let it be the person told you, okay, don't worry about it and say thank you. And don't force people into doing it. If they will give it to you, God stares people to do good works. If they will release it to you, they will release it to you. So pay. Don't be in the habit of owing. You borrow A to pay B to pay B and you are a legend. No. We don't do that here. Praise God. Praise God. How do you handle referrals? You know that believers are very skeptical of referring one another. They're not like, ah, boy. go serious, Rara. How do you handle referrals? Somebody asks you to do something. Do it with all that you have in you. Praise God. So in rendering service to one another, we do it with all love. Because love is kind. Love does not hurt another man. You don't hurt somebody's business, somebody's livelihood. Even in banking, when you borrow and they see that um, you defaulted, they will tell you that, okay, let's come to an arrangement. Maybe the first one did not work. Let's re-strategize. I I'm sorry, oh, I've bought maybe 50, whatever. I can't pay right now. I'm sorry that the debt accumulated this much. And you... Nip it in the board then. Don't now go somewhere else. And you, you are the business owner. Help people to serve you better. Put boundaries. If somebody has paid, for, collected one, two, they did not pay. You still gave them the third one. Mm -mm. Love does not make you a sissy. You can, uh, I'm sorry right now. Um, however, just come and ask me for the English later. I can tell you how to do it. Put a stop to it. Praise God. So, rendering of services is out of love. We are volunteering in our different service units and non-service units. Do it with all joy, with all gladness. Because even if the church cannot afford you, you are also serving the Lord. We are rendering service to the Lord and God is not in the habit of owing no, any man. Don't worry, I'm rounding off. To one end... That everyone is edified. Everyone is edified. First Corinthians 8 verse 1. It was saying concerning food offered to idols and all of those things. But then at the end it says that 
Love edifies. When you are in love or when you walk in love, you are edified. And your faith is empowered to do more because whatever it is that you work on, it will grow. Whatever you feed grows. Galatians 5 verse 6. Your faith is empowered to do more because faith works by love. Anything we feed grows. 1 Corinthians 14 1 says, eagerly pursue love. Run after it like your life depends on it because it does depend on it. We are not just saved and going to heaven. We'll be here on earth. So we need lots of love. And you have lots of love to give. Amen. Amen. Eagerly pursue love like your life depends on it. As we close, let's read 1 John 4, verse 7 to 11. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God. Next verse. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So he's saying the litmus test of our faith is that you love God. Next verse. In this, the love of God was manifested towards us, that God sent his only begotten son into the world, that we might live through him. You can't go wrong loving. Love wins. Love conquers all. Love conquers all. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. You can't go wrong with loving. You can't. There's so much more. So God is calling us into deeper of love. Deeper levels of love. Deeper consecration of loving. God, I only have space for one person. God is saying, you can have more. And I will fill you and you will not be empty. God is love. We are his representative on this earth. And that we love all men just as he has loved us. That our love may abound more and more. That our love may flourish. That not only would we love much, but we would love very well. That our love will mature to its fullest development. That we are not lacking in anything, but we are fully complete in him. In love, in joy. Thank you, Father, for your love is shed abroad in our hearts. Thank you because we do not walk in disobedience. Thank you because we are love children of a love being. And, you know, we say as he is, so we are in this world. So we see it as, as he is, we walk miracles, we do. But if he's a loving father, we ought to be a loving child. Thank you, Father, because your love radiates in us. It overwhelms us. You help us to give context to this word that has been spoken today. And that it will do us good. Thank you, Father. Thank you because our love will yet abound more and more. That we have exceeding, abundant, above more than we can think or imagine. Thank you because we release everyone for all the hurt and unforgiveness in our hearts. Thank you, Father. Thank you because burdens are lifted. And we travel light. Light of weight. Light of grudge. That your spirit will have a free cost in us. Thank you, Father. Thank you because everyone is blessed this morning. And even as they practice. And as they pay attention to this. Their profiting appears to all men in Jesus' name. For in Jesus' name we pray. Was that a good word?